really really into you know womb yoga like so discovering like like discovering this again like because I had no connection to it whatsoever you know when it came to like masturbation I wasn't doing it um you know it was like this idea that I'd grown up with like as a teenager where it's like you know oh like good girls don't touch themselves you know because I I grew up in an all girls catholic school that's Jenny Keane and this is episode five of the yoga life podcast with me Kevin Boyle Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yoga Life podcast where I talk about everything from teaching yoga to practicing yoga to what to eat when you're not doing yoga and um, how to live a more yogic lifestyle. Well, how to try to live a little more yogic lifestyle. With me today is Jenny Keen, and Jenny is, I've known Jenny for about a year now. She um, is many things. She's primarily a yoga teacher and um, she's interested in moon use, in mystical things, uh, womb yoga, and uh, everything that that has to offer. Jenny's just come back from Thailand. She's been away for about seven months, I think. So this is the first time she's been in the studio and her first appearance on the podcast. So without further ado, let's welcome Jenny. Welcome back from Thailand, mm. which is where you were. Yes. Yeah. How was it? It was amazing. I was uh, I went over there to to teach to take some space as well away from the city because it's you know very easy to get caught up you know in in a very hectic busy lifestyle you know yeah. you know yourself I know myself. how busy you can get. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know we're running yeah. from place to place. You yeah. know. Even even though like as a yoga teacher, you are you want to be relaxed and uh, and calm in class. The bits in between that are not necessarily relaxing. Oh, no. no. No, not at all. Like, you're constantly going... And I think that's, like, something people don't really think about when you're, like, you know, teaching yoga. They just, like, think, like, oh, look at those yoga teachers, like, so chilled all the time. They've got a, they've got the life, you know? Yeah. But in between, you're, like, going from studio to studio and also, mm. like, you know... Well, I know for me anyway, like I'm constantly trying to like learn new information and so mm. like, you know, digesting information as well and then trying to keep up your self practice at the same time. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Suddenly, you know, you find I in in Dublin I was just finding like that there wasn't enough hours in the day to mm. do everything that I wanted to do, mm-hmm. you know? And so Thailand is great for that because, mm. you know, you're on an island. Like we were in Copenhagen. Yeah. And so you're on an island and you know, island life naturally moves slower, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and uh, there's more space mm-hmm. in the day. You know, yeah. you teach like one yoga class a day, mm-hmm. <laughs> if even. Wow, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like there's a lot of time, you know, for self-study, for self-practice. Yeah. And also like on an island like this as well, like where there's a huge yoga community, um, there's almost like too many uh, opportunities to train <laughs> so wow. yeah and so uh i primarily went over to to get into i had to study more tantra yoga yeah. for me that was like my you know main kind of goal for going over i was very into all right one of like the biggest things <clears throat> mm-hmm. that i have a real passion for when it comes to like beyond teaching like an asana based class would be womb yoga or women's yoga yes. so yeah <laughs> Go on, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so for me, this is so like. Can I just say, just to, to preface this, um, so when we went for coffee I don't know, it's eight months ago, <laughs> you told me about womb yoga, and I think I actually asked you about it because mm-hmm. I'd heard of this and I didn't know what it was about, and it was a real eye opener for me. Mm-hmm. So um, go on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, the reason uh, this. What, became... what is it first? Mm. It... So it's. Um, hmm. It's connecting to your womb, to your womb space, to your yoni, and that's like encompassing everything. So you have the vulva, the vaginal canal, and then the uterus itself. And mm-hmm. so the reason I got into this was because <clears throat> I, uh, since I was, since I began menstruating, I had an awful, uh, just an awful time with this. Like my cycle was incredibly irregular, mm-hmm. um, between like 39 or 75 days when I was bleeding, it was like at least 10 days and very heavy, very, very heavy. Right. And 
even when I was a teenager, I had uh, like cysts on my ovaries that would burst and I'd like go into hospital. They thought that I was, they thought that I had appendic- appendicitis the first time it happened. Mm-hmm. And then they asked me if I wanted uh, food and I was just like, I want two burgers. <laughs> I was eating burgers at the time. <laughs> because I think it was because you lose losing so much blood that you want your body craved. Yeah, maybe. I'm not too sure. But yeah, they recognized then that it wasn't appendicitis because if you have that you're yeah. not hungry at all you know you've got no appetite mm. so um then I was yeah uh, getting cysts on my ovaries and um had this and so I was put on the pill quite young um and also to manage as well like hormones I had like acne all over my face as well and uh when I started traveling when I was like about 24 25 I came off the pill because I didn't want to be on it anymore mm-hmm and uh i really didn't want to go back on it because for me like my body just felt better Mm -hmm. when i wasn't taking the pill and um about a year and a half later i came home and uh my menstrual cycle came back like with the vengeance like there is like a violence behind it now you know it's like all this feeling of like repression you know for so many years on the pill and it just came back way worse than before like where i was having you know I would never, I, w- I would know that my, uh, that my moon or like my, my menstrual cycle was going to begin. And we call it the moon, you know, okay. so your moon is going to come. Um, I would know because three days beforehand, I would have an explosive fight with like someone in my family, someone close to me. Like if it was my partner at the time or, you know, my family, like I would have this like rage move through me. Like, and suddenly it was like uncontrollable and it didn't feel like me. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to have my, my period now in three days. Mm. And then I would be absolutely floored. Yeah. Long story short, I was like working with a gynecologist as well. And she was saying that the only option really for me was to, to go back on the pill. And this was something that I was like, no way in hell, you mm-hmm. know. So um, then uh, I was told I had PCOS that I most probably had endometriosis. But in order to be completely diagnosed with that, they'd have to do keyhole surgery. And at that point, it also laser out um, the kind of like blood that's like outside of the in in that la- in that layer mm-hmm. is that making sense in the layer in like the layer outside the, the womb yeah no. but this is endometriosis so oh. this is like something a little bit different and then oh. I was told as well then that uh, I was infertile and at this point I was like oh my god you know devastated I like came out to my mum and uh, uh, after the, the the test and um. And then, you know, very quickly I was, you know, I was already um, into yoga at this point and very quickly I was like, wait a minute, like all of this is just an imbalance, like an energetic imbalance in my body. Yeah. And it's almost like all of these things, it was like this sudden feeling of that, like, um, all of these issues with like my womb, like knocking for attention to be like, listen to me, like, or even pay attention to me. And, uh, and at that point I became really really into you know womb yoga like so discovering like like discovering this again like because I had no connection to it whatsoever you know Mm -hmm. when it came to like masturbation I wasn't doing it um you know it was like this idea that I'd grown up with like as a teenager where it's like you know oh like good girls don't touch themselves you know because I I grew up in an all-girls catholic school you know um or that it's like a dirty thing you know and um um, and I think in Ireland like we have a huge amount of shame and guilt Mm -hmm. around this part of our body you know Uh, especially as women you know Mm -hmm. so then this like you know got me started on this journey of like getting into this and like connecting with this and Mm -hmm. so um I began by very simply uh I did lots of reading and there's incredible books and resources out there um when it comes to you know connecting uh, with your menstrual cycle and and bringing it back into rhythm in a natural way in mm-hmm. a holistic way and um yeah I started doing lots of trainings like really became like very like almost fanatic about like wanting to know absolutely everything about what was happening yeah. in this part of my body and uh for me it also as well led me to become uh very interested in ast- in astrology as well so i was already interested in astrology yeah. astrology since i was a kid um loved reading horoscopes and i used to pretend i could like read other people's horoscopes <laughs> <laughs> but you know um when you get into this like part of like syncing your cycle 
uh, to the rhythm of the moon. And I was like tracking everything like on an app, you know, and I was like checking like my hormones, my sleep level and like how I was feeling from day to day. And then I became very interested in like where my, like how I was feeling in conjunction with where the moon, like what sign the moon was moving through. Mm -hmm. Because whereas uh, the sun sign moves through um, the zodiac every like month or so, which is why I would be a Leo being born in August. Mm -hmm. When are you born? February. What date? 26th. Oh, are you on the cusp? So you're either, are you Aquarius? Mm, no, I think I'm Pisces. Pisces. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, you can tell. Pisces. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> what, does that, what does that mean? Pisces. Oh, so Pisces is like the last sign of the zodiac. Right. And so Pisces is said to be like the old soul of the zodiac, so right. of the zodiac family. And it's said to consume the energy of every sign that's come before it. Mm. And Pisces is very, um, like, it's very watery in nature mm-hmm. and very healing energy. Um, and like, what? Uh, I love Pisces you know very much like it's about like it's it, like think about it it's like this like like kind of dream like quality to it um can become like very fanciful as well you know and the way like Pisces move like they can kind of move like they're like they're in a dream as well like that they're kind of like just like sashaying through life you know <laughs> has it got <laughs> so, any has it got any bad points to being a Pisces I mean that can also be a bad yeah. point as well because sometimes oh. you become very like unearthed you know where you're like mm-hmm. too much kind of like in fantasy land and mm. you you know uh, uh sometimes it can be hard to be in the physical world you mm. know like all signs have their their energy where they're in balance mm. and then where they're in excess mm. and then where they're in depletion right. and so they all like you know uh they all work in different ways like it just kind of mm. we can be in those states as well like in in uh you know at any given moment in time even during the day as well you know so- just take something to so does all of that tie into, do you teach that in, when you teach room yoga, do you teach about, astro- is it astrology or astronomy? Astro- astrology. Astrology. Yeah, yeah. Do you teach that as well? What, what do you do in, like when you teach in room yoga? Well, for me, it begins with um, uh, just giving women space to come back into connection with the physical aspect of their yoni and their womb. So like encouraging women like, to look at their vagina, like to look at their vulva, mm. you know, <clears throat> with a mirror, with a mirror, yeah, to like, you know, to look at it. Like, so it was, it's so interesting because w- when I was doing workshops la- uh, last year, um, I gave like a sheet of paper out, and it was like just like a a drawing of uh, of the vulva, so the outside of the vagina, and there was like eight boxes, and I gave it to them to, and there was like little points. And each part of of the the vulva was like just to name them, and it was so interesting to me because you know, uh, and this is something that I found as well. Like this is why I do this because when I was when I started with this, I was like, wow, like I'm actually not entirely sure like what this is called and what that's called, and like when you give these pe- papers out to people, like this can be some of the most profound things because this is on our body and we don't know. Mm. Mm. we don't know the anatomy yeah. you know we don't know what this is called we don't know what this is for um and so yeah when i was doing the the workshops i would give it out in every workshop and uh, there was one woman who got um all eight of them right but that was because she was a gp <laughs> mm, okay. but after that like most people were getting like at most four out of eight you know yeah. Um, and so you know even this you know like a part of our body that is so important to us that is an an integral part of our femininity Mm -hmm. as well and just that we don't engage with it you know it's like it's hidden and we don't you know want to talk about it and even talking about it can be like hush hush Mm -hmm. or you know embarrassing or you know this kind of thing yeah because I think I think um, hearing the word womb yoga would make me think firstly it was for women who are once uh, like prenatal women Mm -hmm. that's it into a pregnancy Mm. and then once i if i understood that that wasn't the case then i would think it was going to be very intimate and would make me feel i'm trying to imagine myself as a woman it would make me feel uncomfortable going to one of these workshops because how intimate and extreme is it going to be um so what how does it how like so wow. how how my far does it go basically <laughs> as far as you want <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean i mean like, in ireland you know I people know. aren't as open as they are in other cultures same in england we have mm. a similar culture 
that's true but um but actually it's not just ireland like this can be a scary thing for any for any woman you know um Mm. to find that you're not connected to like this part of your body and i mean in the workshops itself like i very much went into like um we explored information first you know and you're playing games and uh like so for example we would start with the cycle the woman's cycle you know Mm -hmm. and you explain about uh your menstrual cycle and how it um how they say that in every one woman there's four women okay and this is like as you move because we're cyclical beings in every one what does that mean everyone like i feel like as well like if men knew this they would understand women more yeah interesting I, when i was in nepal i actually gave a, a like as I, we were in a, i was in a buddhist monastery for six weeks and i was speaking about womb yoga there and uh some of the girls became really interested and wanted to know about it and then uh there was one of the one of my friends there who's a man and he was like i i want i think you need to tell this to the men as well and he's like i feel like i understand my partner now really yeah and so this is to do with the fact that like we're all cyclical beings yeah we're all cyclical by nature that women move through a cycle and, and that is something that we can't uh, ignore and that we can't um pretend doesn't exist mm-hmm. you know so when it comes to our menstrual cycle they say that there's uh, four women in one woman and so this moves through the archetypes you know of the women so they say that when you're bleeding um and there's there's two different versions to this so if you're bleeding on the full moon then you um this is really f- more about um tapping into that wise woman so you're tapping into uh, mother nature where you're opening yourself up to receive uh insights you know whether it's like um like like centuries ago would have been you know to receive like uh messages you mm. know or to receive um oh, what's the word called i've forgotten it where you're psychic ah psychic messages okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just, I, I, just myself. I told you that you did yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you Evan. <laughs> psychic psychic messages <laughs> so yeah and then <clears throat> if you're uh bleeding on the new moon then actually what you're tapping into is uh, or trying to sync your cycle to bleed on the new moon then what you're t- sinking into is to uh become fertile and to to become pregnant actually mm. so um there's two different aspects but <clears throat> for example say for example if we're bleeding on the full moon so this is considered to be moving through the seasons yeah so this is the winter time for women mm. so in winter time this is like years ago women would have like gone to the red tents and they would have been menstruating together you know like you know this like women if you're like there's a group of women living together their cycles tend to like sync together yeah, well, yeah i was gonna ask you that is that true yes yeah yeah it is true yeah okay. and um uh, so that's a very natural thing it's like happens like from you know centuries ago and so women would have gone to the red tents yeah. and they would have been there to meditate to be in silence to be uh in stillness and also to be held in a space like with other women you know and what countries would this happen in what cultures oh i mean this was happening across like across the across the globe yeah. like there's really incredible books actually that you can read maybe do you, maybe i i could send you some of them okay. do you have like a link that you could put up because we could send yeah give people books yeah like all, audible links yeah yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like um but well, this is interesting was, yeah mm-hmm. so, like in native yeah. american culture as well yeah. like in uh oh i mean in ireland to a certain extent as well like i mean this was happening like in in it, like in centuries ago when we were living like in communities you know that, that's what i was gonna ask you like wh- how do you think um society is affecting that process Mm. as in like affecting the cycles and affecting um because what i think is bizarre is that and maybe it can't be helped is that now we work in an office Mm -hmm. for 10 hours a day how many done that whatever 50 hours a week and the time you get and someone a stranger looks after your kids uh, you have no support network generally. We don't know our neighbours. We know people on social media, but we don't know the person next door to us. So you don't. Women don't have that same community. Like men can have it. It's a bit more accessible for men. They could join football teams, and I mean women can join teams as well. But there's not as much out there for women to come together, like as a sisterhood. You know, uh, whereas I think there is more for men. Mm. And um, 
and uh, I just wonder what it's like to be a supposedly like in the states women far outnumber men in terms of any, taking antidepressants and uh, and anxiety medication uh, and I wonder how much of that comes from being isolated mm. you know yes. uh, so my question is how do you think it's a it's a big question um, but modern society affects the cycle. Mm. Oh, I mean, it affects it massively because we're in this uh, very masculine dominated world. And like even, for example, like women are stopping their menstrual cycle because it's a nuisance, you know, and it's a pain. Mm. And also, you know, when you're, you know, we're emotional creatures, you know, and yet, you know, in work, we're, we're, t- we're told like that we have to like hold our emotions, mm. that we can't, you know, cry if we want to cry, you know, that like suddenly then it's like, oh, you know, she's just a woman, you yeah, know. Yeah, and so this is like, all part of that as well because you know if you were to look really at like the cycle of a woman like we move through very different cycles you know so even for example very different cycles to each other sorry very different um like we become different people through each of our through each like you know quadrant of our cycle yeah so you know for example when we're menstruating we're more inclined to say no you know so if it or to tell the truth so if a man is like saying hey like this you know what do you think about this and you and you have a feel like a real strong feeling about something you'll be like no whereas when you're ovulating oh when you're ovulating it's the <laughs> <laughs> like oh equipment <laughs> but when you're ovulating um you're moving into summertime so even looking at how you uh, uh, look at this point, like your like women's lips are become juicier. You know everything becomes like a little bit wetter. There's more life. Like women's bodies become curvier. Um, their lips even and their cheeks become rosy. You know, and they're more inclined to say yes to everything. So it's a really good time to ask a woman on a date. When's you know? this exactly? Doesn't know where it's like when she's ovulating. You know. And, and like even her, the way she smells changes as well, you wow. know, and, and that's like, it makes sense, you know, we're ovulating. So we're trying to attract male attention, you mm. know? So, um, yeah, you become radiant. So it's like that summertime and like, you know, in springtime and the archetype here. So I said the archetype when you're in the in menstruating is the wise woman. Uh, the archetype here is the mother. You know, and so, you know, when you're in springtime, then you have, you know, uh, this time where you're like slowly coming out of your menstruation and there's still stillness and quietness in the beginning. But then it comes into this feeling of like uh, newness, like a fresh start. And you're suddenly like, oh, wow. And it's almost like the child. There's a lot of innocence in this. And then in autumn time, this is when you're coming into the process of letting go and beginning to shed. Mm -hmm. And this autumnal time is, is when women will start to experience PMS as well towards the end of this and depending on how they have treated themselves what kind of um life they've had for the last month uh will determine how smooth um or how uh or how maybe painful their 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 menstrual cycle will be or their their moon will be mm-hmm. you know so if they experience like a you know a really kind of aggressive pms like mm-hmm. or if they experience a lot of um pain or cramping you know mm-hmm. that this all has an effect on on how you've lived your life have you nourished yourself have you taken time for yourself mm-hmm. you know um have you moved because you know women like we need to move our hips You know, we need to like be constantly like, that's why, you know, women are curvy for a reason. Like we're supposed to be moving the whole time, you know, Mm -hmm. and in Ireland, like look at the way we we walk, you know, like everything is straight, you know, and everything is like very closed and it's like, like Mm -hmm. we're supposed to be, you know, these like sensual fluid, you know, Mm -hmm. um, sexy people you know like yeah. that like move their bodies and this keeps you know as you as your the lining of your womb is forming this keeps everything like nice and fluid and mm-hmm. you know one of the teachers that i had describes it like porridge yeah so imagine you have a big pot of porridge and if you're not stirring that porridge mm-hmm. then the the porridge is going to get clumpy it's going to stick to the side of the pot it's going to yeah. burn a little bit as well yeah. and so when you're shedding this it's a lot harder you yeah, know yeah. whereas um if you can keep everything moving and fluid and stir the pot the whole time yeah, you know yeah. then everything comes out quite smooth and fluidly yeah. and you'll see this as well like one of the first things that i did when i was uh connecting with my 
cycle was I stopped using you know uh, tampons I stopped using sanitary pads I started instead to use the moon cup and to use um reusable sanitary pads so I also speak about this in the workshops as well because a lot of people have a fear about using a moon cup where they're like oh what if it goes in and it gets stuck or they've used it before and had bad experiences where they've still been leaking or it's an internal thing is it yeah so okay. it's like a little cup you know and uh and you insert it inside you and it, and it catches your blood you know wow. And it's amazing because it's also as well allowing you to interact with your blood. Yeah, so yeah. like you see what it looks like. You see if it, there's like lots of clotting in it, you yeah, know. Yeah. And it really gives you an indication of how you have been for the last month as well. It's very beautiful. And we and and to re, to um, cultivate a relationship with your blood that isn't like automatically like. So sometimes when you say this, I I say this to my friends, they're like, oh like I don't want to touch that and that's because we have been used to using things like like uh, tampons and and sanitary pads which are oxygenated and chlorinated and so when our blood goes Mm. onto this it instantly becomes toxic and it doesn't smell Mm. nice you know so like you're taking you know you're taking the tampon out you're taking your and you're just like oh put this in the bin and even even look at the bin we use you know like we don't have like it's not a regular bin like this stuff is so toxic that it has to be like it's a separate bin where a separate man from a company that like you know is, is in charge of all this comes and takes the bin away you know and so our blood is like a beautiful vital thing and i'm not i'm not saying like oh uh, like everyone drink their menstrual blood i would never say that <laughs> although some people do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay but it's just like interacting you know yeah. interacting with it and realizing that it's not a disgusting thing that it's yeah. a part of us you know mm-hmm. and that there's a huge amount of nourishment and like um potential for for life because this is what you know uh supports you know and nourishes the cells uh like you know if you were to become pregnant like if you were to if your eggs and sperm were to fertilize you know mm, i get you yeah. mm. <laughs> i know that, that works that magic <laughs> do you <laughs> <laughs> a little I've been... <laughs> <laughs> that's my next question where do babies come from <laughs> <laughs> the belly button <laughs> <laughs> i can handle that as well <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah what about um what's yoni what does that mean yoni so yoni is a word that uh, describes the entire um female genital system Mm -hmm. (laughs) so for example we have our uterus Mm -hmm. so this is the womb and then we have the vaginal canal and then we have the vulva so the vulva Mm -hmm. is the outside of the vagina of the the yoni mm. yeah and so most of the time we'll say oh vagina and you know that's what we'll call it but the vagina is only saying it's only one thing one mm. part of it whereas the yoni takes into account all of it you know and and it literally means sacred space so already you're starting to like um engage with the way that you consider this space um so that it's not something that's like you know oh i don't want to I don't want to go there it's mm-hmm. scary it becomes something that's like completely sacred um and very holy yeah. you know like w- we like women are wild and holy creatures you know and to really honor this part of our body you know that we are you know if, if you look even at the the yogic tradition like this area is the sacral area mm-hmm. you know and it's like uh this governs you know it governs our our reproductive organs but not only that, like it's not just talking about the sexual area, but this is like also how we interact socially with people, you know. So like this area is called Swadhisthana, you know, and Swadhisthana, like swa means self. Mm-hmm. And so, and and it's it's actually, it's literal translation is like one's own abode, you know. And so it's not just about how you feel in your own self that's more like money poor like your own individuality this is about how you relate to other people Mm -hmm. so community um to the world around you it's also where you get your uh creative powers from you Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. and this is where creative expression is 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 expressed you know through and so when it comes to this part of our body you know it's so important for us not only in terms of creating life you know in terms of the baby but like in any kind of life you know like we have that creative you know vital potential as women and this is also as well our orgasmic nature which so many of us um are terrified of you know or or uncomfortable with or 
um, unfamiliar with because, yeah. you know, we don't take the time to uh, engage with ourselves in that way, you know? Like, yeah. well, you... who sets aside time to pleasure themselves? Because yeah. nobody has time. Yeah, it's not like, oh, I do 50 sit-ups in the morning and then <laughs> I'm going to pleasure my... Like, it's not like in your diary. No. Uh, um, because you mentioned before about yoni massage. Oh, yeah. Um, and so this is what I, I went to Thailand for. So for me, when I was uh, getting into womb yoga, yeah. I was like reading all the books, going to trainings. And when I went to Thailand, um, I, this is actually quite funny. Can I just say, actually, I probably sound like a complete pervert. But, no. but I'm just, I, I, I think it's important to separate or to talk about sexuality without yes. it being sexual, if that makes yes. sense. Um, so... Kevin is Can... winking at me <laughs> constantly. <laughs> that, that camera's actually stopped working, so you can't see me now, so I could be doing anything. But, um... Stop touching my leg, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, go on, continue. Yeah. While I look down here. <laughs> go on, Jen. Oh, I love you. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> um, you went to Thailand for, yes. your, for your any massage. Mm-hmm. Well, part of it. I, oh, I was, it was okay, more like yoni massage by me. So what ended up happening was, so I told you that I had started using the moon cup and not using tampons. Yeah. And on my way to Thailand in December, um, I, uh, I used a tampon and I forgot about it. And I didn't have my period while I was over there. And I was thinking, oh, this is because I'm doing so much yoga and I'm doing so much sublimation. So drawing the energy up. Mm-hmm. And this is something that can be a natural response to that. And so I was thinking, oh, this is why. And then one day I went on this hike and uh, I started to like sweat profusely. And, but not only sweat, like, (laughs) this might be a little bit disgusting, but the smell was awful. Like I had, my friends were with me and I was like, please stay far away from me because it was just like, I felt like I was like detoxing something actually. And then we went to this market and I had to use the bathroom and I never used the bathroom in this place because it was not a very nice bathroom. Mm. And then I was squatting over the toilet and um, I felt something move inside me. And so I had this like terror, you know, this image of like, oh my God, there's, an, there's some kind of creature in my vagina. And so I like ramped my hand up like, and then I felt this like thing, this string and I pulled it out and I was in complete and utter shock. And it was a tampon that I'd put in two months earlier. Whoa. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I was very lucky that I hadn't gone into toxic shock. And I think because I had been doing so much yoga while I was there that it was helping to detox my body the whole time. And I really think that saved me. So what what came from this was this realization of like how disconnected I was from any kind of sensation in in my yoni and I was like how did I not feel that there was something there like how did I not feel this and it was crazy and I was just like oh my goodness like I can't feel my yoni and it was really this realization then that I was like I need to do something about this and so I met um I met this uh woman um and she was offering yoni massage. And so yoni massage is like an internal vaginal massage. And there's many reasons that you can do this. You can do this for a trauma if you've experienced rape. Um, uh, Really beautiful as well for helping to massage out like scar tissue. Um, And my intention behind doing it was brain mapping. So starting to you know, um, figure out like the points on your vagina, the K spot, the G spot, you know, the cervix, you know, and really just like allow, like brain mapping, you know, yeah. um, so that I could actually have a sense, a sense of what was inside me and, mm-hmm. and how it felt, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, the very, and I was very nervous, you know, I was like terrified a little bit. I was like, oh my goodness, what is this going to be like? And it was the most sacred and profound experience of my entire life it was so eye-opening mm-hmm. I was like and and I'm not in any way shape or form um you know uh embarrassing mm. or just uh, I was with another woman mm-hmm. and um just held in a space that was really really there was a lot of trust mm-hmm. um a lot of kindness, a lot of support, you know, and a lot of understanding as well, you know, and this is like all of these things, like things that I was looking for, you know, and so, um, I, like even at one point she was like, you're talking the whole time and she's like, okay, now I'm massaging the right wall of your vaginal canal. And I was like, oh my goodness, I never realized that my 
you only had a right side and a left side before mm -hmm. and that one side could hold a lot of tension and the other side could be like quite pleasurable you know um even like in certain points on the left side and the right side how different it is you know so you become like highly highly in tune with with what's happening you know mm -hmm. in your body and how it feels mm -hmm. you know and that is a very powerful thing because so much of so many of us um you know so many of us don't know if we've ever had an orgasm um a lot a lot of women believe that they can't have an orgasm and so therefore sex becomes something that they're just doing you know mm -hmm. or they're doing in a way where you know uh if they're just like beating you know it's like there's like pounding and that's also you know creating more scar tissue and creating atrophy, muscle atrophy in the body as well and you know creating less sensation yeah. so instead you know like the nerve endings are like almost like drawing away from from the vagina you know and in this space there's absolutely what was incredible about it was that there was absolutely no um need for me to perform you know perform what like in terms of like so in terms of perform so like no need for me to to be like oh yes this feels good or oh, okay. you know you like when you're with it. a man yeah. Yeah, yeah you're you're completely relaxed yeah. you know and you're allowed to just like really sense your body you mm -hmm. know and there's no um pressure to orgasm you know sometimes you have this with sex not sometimes a lot of the time you have this with sex where with women there's like a pressure to orgasm yeah. you know and so a lot of women fake the orgasm mm -hmm. you know um and, and that's you know they do that for many reasons sometimes it's like to get it over over with as well you know yeah. and so instead you're developing this relationship with your with your yoni where it's um you know uh instead of just something that you're doing um that you're really starting to have like bring sensation into this part of your body mm -hmm. uh to bring like a juiciness here to start to like really awaken you know the the yoni again and uh like this for me brought started to bring my cycle back into rhythm almost immediately and so when I was in Thailand, like this was my main focus, like to, to train in this mm. and, uh, and, you know, offer it as a, offer it as something if women want to do it, you know, because this is, you know, what changed my life, yeah. you know? So is it available now in Ireland? Uh, in Dublin, like as in, can people go for yoni massage? So I actually don't know anyone in Dublin that does yoni massage here. Right. It's funny, like you, you can go for a massage uh, and the person you could keep completely naked and then massage every single part of your body you know you've got your pants off the massage and your glutes mm -hmm. but that one part of the body at the front is the bit that if they touch that then that's considered prostitution or you know like the, the, not I know it's not as black and white as that but it's so um, yes, yes. the thing is when you get into get into um, uh, I suppose um, like pleasuring someone because a massage is pleasurable mm -hmm. okay but what you're talking about there, a yoni massage, it's not a sexual thing, it's a pleasurable thing. But um, people may find it hard to uh, separate the two. You know, they find it hard that they um, have, have in that area of their body stimulated and it's not a sexual thing. Mm -hmm. So that could be quite a tricky, um, not tricky just for, um, tricky for the, just the person to navigate in their own mind. You know, how do I, uh, and it's just weird the way we've kind of said them. I don't know if it's because of the Catholic Church, but essentially that part of your body is only for one of the person to go near. Mm -hmm. You know, if that, so, yeah, um, yeah it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, random, ra random question, but do you believe, and I don't know if this is too personal, but do you believe, you can we cut this out if it's too personal, <laughs> so, <laughs> but do you believe in monogamy? Oh, monogamy, yes. Um... Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, I do. I think like when it comes to monogamy, um, polyamory, um, I think it's very much like an individual thing. You know, mm. I would never, ever, you know, put my opinions on somebody else. You know, mm. I think there's a lot of people that want to explore polyamorous relationships mm. the same way people want to explore monogamous relationships. Mm. And I think like, uh, you know, who am I to judge? Mm. You know, it's, it's interesting like, though that like, I think monogamy is almost like a sacrifice that you're making because you love that person. Mm -hmm. you know, I think to want to be with other people is natural sometimes, uh, particularly if you're younger. Um, but I don't, th I don't actually think it's natural to be with one other person, but I think that's why it's such a, um, what's the word, 
um, what's the word then? Mm -hmm. Not important, an admirable um, sacrifice to make mm -hmm. is that, and I think life is about sacrifice. It's not about a comp about compromise, um, and um, it's just it's interesting that if you're talking about, say, for example, if my missus went for a yoni massage. I think initially that'd be hard for me to understand. Mm. Like I can't, I don't get it. Are you seeking pleasure because I can't give you the pleasure, and and therefore, what if I went for the sim a similar service? Mm. You know, how would she feel about that? You know, it's yeah. <laughs> but you see, you're assuming though that this is about pleasure. You know, exactly, and and I mm. am, and and yeah, that's... because for in most cases, this is not about pleasure. It's about um. Mm, it's so when it comes to to yoni massage for women like women are going there because they have no sensation yeah. in their yoni um and when that happens you know uh they don't feel pleasure yeah. when they're having sex you know and and also uh what mostly comes up it's the same way as as uh, your body you know like there's a lot of tension that we hold in this like in this society you know we're like living in a type a society there's an awful lot of stress a lot of women that have like um incontinence as well in the pelvic floor like where it's where they you know they wee a little bit when they laugh or sneeze and things like this like that's very common and <laughs> yeah and a lot of people think that this happens because their pelvic floor is loose but it can also happen in the other direction as well where the pelvic floor is too tight and holds too much tension yeah. you know and this is a part of us like look at like where we teach yoga how many people uh, find it difficult to breathe a full breath yeah. you know and so we tend not to breathe down into our pelvic diaphragm yeah and so this whole area becomes under like uh, comes under tension comes under a lot of stress and it ties into the same idea of like why their menstrual cycle might be you know out of sync or um uh you know um not smooth you know it all ties into this and this is about uh you know first of all it's very hard to say what's going to happen in the massage and that it can really go down two routes where the massage is more therapeutic mm -hmm. so it becomes more about like myofascial release internal work you know um like there's even uh, uh cases like there's studies done where they say that by stimulating the clitoris mm -hmm. it's actually um something that can reverse prolapse so prolapse is like when the uterus is coming out into the cer like through the cer into the well, vaginal what, canal why would it come out uh, it, it's very common. So apparently, like sixty-six percent of women have this after having a kid. Uh, not even after having a kid nowadays. Yeah. So there's studies that it's like yeah, sixty-six oh, percent. I think it okay. is of women have this because so, the muscles like, are just not strong enough, maybe or not. Yeah, and uh, just like you know, it's the same thing. Like if you're not using it, you lose it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, and it is muscle after all. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. It's just another part of our body. So it can go along like the therapeutic approach, you know, where it's like releasing tension, where it's breaking down scar tissue um uh, or it can go down the tantric way as well you mm. know where it becomes about pleasure and you know like a lot of women uh you know especially when it comes to even like female ejaculation sometimes like there's this feeling of like they need to pee when they're having sex mm -hmm. and uh sometimes this can actually be like a uh, an indication that um an ejaculate ejaculation is coming on you know mm -hmm. and it's about surrendering surrendering and relaxing into this state so that that can take place you know female ejaculation is like uh one of those things that's like quite contentious you know there's like a lot of like different like research like uh, researching like and and a lot of it is like clashes you know and says like no it's this no it's not it's this you know yeah. um i i feel like i was gonna tell a personal story there but maybe i won't because this when this gets submitted to the internet is there forever so wow. like, think of that way <laughs> so forever my goodness maybe we could edit a few things <laughs> <laughs> i know it's crazy you think about it isn't it it is crazy like it's yeah. there forever people people can download it and then they have it on their phone and maybe in the year 2080 someone will listen to hey, this you're scaring me Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so just talk freely you know just have a chat there you go <laughs> know, yeah. Mm. um yeah so um on that note, <laughs> um, I could talk to you for ages, but um, um, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, so. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that as much as myself and Jenny did. Next week, I have Brian Malone on the podcast. 
Brian is a yoga teacher. He specializes in breath work and he's a bit of a handstand guru. He also has quite a silky voice, which I think you'll appreciate. I, well, I could finish with a word for my sponsor, but I don't have a sponsor. If you're listening to this and you'd like to sponsor the podcast, you know where to find me. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye, see you next week.